Hello and welcome to a brand new episode brought to you on the Four Eyed Radio Network. If you want to see more shows, eh, check out foureyedradio.com, eh? Sorry about that. Jonesy, I told you not to contact me from Warlock's Tower. Is this a secure line? I don't know, but it is the war room, so I'm pretty sure no one's listening. Point taken. Do you think they suspect anything? Of course not. Good. Good. Remember to take note of everything those two idiots do. No problem, Mr. Danforth. How else can you decide which one I'm going to replace? Um, hey everybody, how's it going? Before we get started, uh, we want to remind everybody that Warlocks did get bought by uh, Edge of Blade thanks to some generous donations from J Free and Captain J. Um, so there are some uh, performance guidelines that we have to kind of go through with every new war pod and we just got an email from edge so we're going to read it right now let you guys know what you can expect from the episode yeah peel back the curtain a little bit gentlemen edge of blade here with razor's edge uh corporation etc et skip that skip, yeah, yeah, skip, yeah, skip it yeah, skip that. it's a really long title i wanted to inform you that due to several lapses in performance in the last war pod looking at you johnny yeah uh, that's me uh, the following alterations will be made. One, uh, another usage of the shut up button will be made uh, available to Zach Nanimus. Yeah, he sent us a package. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, All right. yeah. uh, number two, uh, Zach will also be entitled to a use of our studio audience whenever he feels the need to punctuate one of his classic knee slappers. So, when I that's, hit this button, everybody's got to laugh. That's obnoxious. No, it's classic comedy. <laughs> and finally, three. An official corporate sponsored host will be introduced for all future episodes. Good luck, boys. Try not to fuck this up. Official host? What are you talking about? What's up, guys? I'm Jonesy, and this is your new episode of The War Pod. What's up, man? The fuck? Surprises abound, America! I'm Zach Nanimus. I'm Johnny Dim. And I'm Jonesy. And you stumbled into yet another episode of The War Pod, where we uh, introduce Shim In and kind of surprise us hey, with new it's, hosts. It's not it's nothing crazy, you know. Uh, Mr. Danforth just thought, hey, maybe we should spice things up, get a third party in here, you know? Sure, and you're a, you're a friend of the show. You went Canadian there for a second. Well, yeah, yeah. But that's got that's got to be the do talk. And I, you look great, by the way. Oh, thanks. I just wanted to say thanks. that. Yeah, it's a it's a new look I'm going for. Okay. Yeah. Um, but tonight we are going to be talking about Emily Blunt being the new Mary Poppins. The sort of secret release, we may be breaking this news to you, despite the fact that it's like two weeks old, um, that Final Fantasy IX is now on mobile. We're going to talk a little bit about a very exciting experience that is available to uh, gaming fans up north called True Dungeon, and we're going to be doing our top three most anticipated not yet released games of 2016 of all time! <sighs> Ah, the crowd's going wild. Hmm. Jonesy, you're the uh, you're the new host here, so uh, why, why don't you tell me what you want to talk about first? Well, let's talk about mobile, because let me tell you, man, mobile is hot right now. So, Final yeah. Fantasy IX, coming to mobile. It's starting to sound a little forced. Huh? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Seriously, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Nothing. Mobile. Okay, mobile. Um, mobile Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy IX. Um, I guess I guess we're going to talk about this. The first thing we should talk about is... Um, how did you guys feel about Final Fantasy? Because it is a weird title to have done this with. Because um, the big fan title has been, and for reasons that escape me, always will be Final Fantasy VII. Um, uh... 
No, it's it's not only is Final Fantasy VII not my favorite of the series, I actively dislike that game. Sure, interesting. Um, but I love Final Fantasy IX. Sure. Um, so I was really excited when this happened, but I have to imagine I'm like one of the few. Well, apparently not. Apparently, there's a market for your kind. They make M and M's games, so <laughs> they'll they'll make anything. Um, but don't don't underestimate the uh, the power of the mobile market right now. Yeah? Yeah. Is it strong? It's strong. I've okay. heard that. Yeah, I've heard that somewhere great. before. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, did you guys have any experience with uh, with Final Fantasy IX? No, I didn't play it. Neither of you have played this game. No, I have not. You know what? I don't think I have. I I hesitate to say best in the series, mm-hmm. but it's up there. Is it? Yes. Which yeah. one was that? Was that the one with the monkey tail guy? Yeah, Zidane. Uh, yeah, Zidane, uh, Z- Zidane and his fellow uh, his fellow travelers go around the Mist Continent trying to uh, trying to learn the secret of Queen Bran's mischief as she attempts to create her own black mages. Was that also the one where they had the, the one guy that was your ally that was big and had a lot of armor on? Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Uh, I normally don't I don't try to get my brother on the podcast, but I know he has played that. And I know he did enjoy it. I think it's a little late. It is a little late. on the podcast. It's a little late right now. It's coming right now. All right. But no, but that's, that's, <laughs> that's interesting, though, because um, he, did, he didn't play a lot of Final Fantasy either. Um, but anyway, that, that's him. It doesn't matter. This was interesting and a little bit of a surprise. At least that was my, my interpretation of this news. I mean, they haven't brought any Final Fantasies to mobile yet, have they? This is the first one? No, they have. They brought six. They brought six. six that, yeah, that's easy to do because it's, it's, what, 8-bit? Uh, I'm sure you can find an emulator for one. Yeah, you know and stuff like that. Uh, but this is the first one that's actually had uh, the, that's actually had technical updates. Yeah, um, and they're also doing uh, there's uh, there's a few a few I'm going to say a few new things. I'm not going to try and count it. Um, so there's there's now auto saving, right? Which um, if I remember correctly, you had to use Moogles. Why am I asking you? You don't know. <laughs> you could you make things up. Yeah. Oh no, you had to use. You had to eat a whole peanut butter sandwich. Wow. And your mom couldn't get mad at you. In game or IRL? Both. Wow. Um, no, you had to. Um, I think I'm pretty sure that you had to use a Moogle. Uh, I think that that's something that I found interesting because there are so many games where the way that you save is integral right. to the way the game is played, like. Um, what is it? Um, it's not. It's not. They took. They took. Uh, it's all. It's all auto save and Fallout Four, right? No. 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 That's no, right. You, you have yeah. to manually save. Yeah. But quick you, save. They have a quick save option though, which is cool. Like you can literally save. You can make two different files for a five second interval. Yes. Depending on yes. how you wanted that to go. Yeah, and actually, if there was not quick save in Fallout Four, I would not have a save game right now because every single time I do a full save. That file is corrupt. Yeah, the quick save works though. I mean, a, a good example of the uh, of how it can change a game so much is um, Final Fantasy X, mm-hmm. uh, because that's the one I'm playing through right now. That was oh, loud. that is. This is very refreshing Mountain Dew, guys. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that, the, guys... new, is that the new Mountain Dew Code Red? No, no, no. This is, this is classic, classic Mountain Dew right here. Oh, oh you guys want one? I have some more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I I might have one. I mean, they're later. cans. It's, yeah. it's not the same as the I'll, bottle. I'll just put it right. Yeah, here you go. For you too. No, no there's no Which, there's no uh, P P. What is it? PBR. We are uh, we are big fans of Mountain Dew here on the well, the War Pod. Well, you, you are, I guess. Um, you you are decked <laughs> out in Mountain Dew gear. Mountain. It's just. I mean, it's it's no big deal. You know. Oh. Just, you do this. I'm just a fan. That's okay. all okay. of Mountain Dew. If we're turning into a, a Pepsi uh, Cola product, Mountain Dew commercial. I get Mountain Dew. Terry might give you one. <laughs> no, Terry will give you one. Okay, anytime. <laughs> Jersey, yes. okay. I'm sorry, Jonesy. When was the last uh, Final Fantasy game you played? I'm playing through ten right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, that, that's one of the things I was talking about was you have to um, you have to actually have to find an item in the game. You have mm-hmm. to go and find the sphere in order to save, and. I don't know. It puts a tension on the game, not not a tension, a tension on the game. Right. Where it's like I have to go do this, or my uh, or my progress isn't going uh, isn't going to be made. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to save it. Um, and I think that I think it adds to the game. And I, I don't know that auto saving is a good move. 
I don't know how you guys feel about it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm more of an EA gamer myself, so uh, I don't really get around to playing the Final Fantasy. The last one I played was Tactics, actually. But I hate Tactics. You really? about this? I hate it. Fantastic game. I've you know, been wanting to play it because I, I actually enjoy games like that. We have the grid system. And oh, everything. yeah, yeah. I love that grid system. I love system. that stuff, yeah. Um, no, I don't like the idea, like, from what I've heard, because I've asked many people who have enjoyed Tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've asked you this question a long time ago, and my understanding is that Tactics has the same number of battles that you would expect from any other Final Fantasy game. Here's the rub. They take, like, 20 minutes each. They can be a little lengthy. Not twenty minutes. I mean, the bigger battles are, the the, the faster battles probably. The five opening to ten battle minutes. for me was five minutes. Well, okay, that's a big battle. Huh? Oh, yeah. You know, opening battle in what? Nine, ten. Uh, tactics, tactics advance. Tactics advance. Tactics oh. advance was the only one I played, and I was done. Well, uh, so they brought this one to mobile. Are they going to bring more than more than a mobile? Is this a, is this a trend? Is we're going to see more of this? I I really have no idea. They have a history of doing it. Yeah. So I don't, uh, I don't really know why they wouldn't. Um, I hope that they don't do the things that they did to this game, that, um, to the future installments, because the other thing that they brought in is a mode where there's no random encounters. Uh-huh. Which kind of defeats the purpose. That would, that would be a little strange. Well, it's, I think in every... Yeah, yeah, there was in, fin- in Final Fantasy X and most Final Fantasy games, if you ride a chocobo, you're free from those anyway. So it's kind of like a perk for playing the game. So mm-hmm. they're kind of just throwing everything out, and it's kind of like a, okay, you don't ha- really have to work for too much in the game. Let's just make it... Uh, l- let's just let's just simplify the whole thing. Right. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like when I play a game to... I wouldn't even say to a certain degree. I would say that I am, I am testing my metal against the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to... You know, it's not supposed to be just mental bubble gum where I just do it and everything's fine. You know, I I am... It is supposed to be difficult for me. To a great extent, I would say. Well, maybe they just need to uh, simplify some particular game mechanics to allow it to fit well into the, uh, the mobile world. Uh... I'd say there's credence to that. I can't. I can't speak to that because I'm a really weird mobile gamer. Sometimes I'll sit down at my phone for a few hours. Like I treat it like a like a console. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I fell back into that trap that I caught you in about a year ago. Yeah, Brave yeah. Brave Frontier. Yeah, I'm playing it again. I can't. I can't do that again. Why? Because the microtransactions, they really push them. It's like it's impossible to get through that game without them. What are you talking about? I've had a lot of trouble. I remember when I stopped playing that game, I was just fed up with it. Um, the game where you you get the you get the little anime girl and she's Brave got Frontier. This, and yeah. she got this, and she's got the scythe and she hits the flan. Yeah, yeah. I'm like halfway through the game. What's halfway through the game? Fifty percent. It tells you. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, un- I, I, I excuse me. I, I uninstalled the game a long time ago. I, I enjoyed it for the most part, but I found it a very uphill climb because of the transaction, the microtransactions. Well, I got. I got playing the same game. Yes. I don't think so. Either that or I, I just mean, suck maybe at it. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, it's called Brave Frontier. It, I know exactly what he's talking about. It's a, it's a little interesting that he sucks at video games. And he's on a video game podcast. You know what I'm saying, America? Well, it used to be a video games and beer podcast, so oh. I think he's just a drunk that keeps showing up <laughs> to his own apartment to record. <laughs> um, the other option, Johnny, would be for you to just pay for the game that you're enjoying. I you have. Know. Huh? I you, have. You use, I, mi- I, you use microtransactions? Yeah, I'm scared to, I'm scared to do more. How many? How, how much? How much money have you paid? Not much, but I, I'm. I'm oh, a, five I'm bucks. Just, roughly. Okay. How much? How much would you pay for this game on console? About fifteen. Well, it's not on console. It's not on console. It's on your phone, but you're still enjoying it. I would pay less than ten bucks. Yeah, I think that it's it's actually better that it's on your phone because they tell you that it's a window to a magical world. They do, and you have to tap. This this gate, in order to get into the magical world and see the little anime girl. Uh, oh, he said he did. He, yeah, when he said I do, I just I assumed. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt there. Go go on. Jonesy just gave me a Mountain Dew. <laughs> you know what, Terry? Another one. You get the applause.
Now, Terry, I would like to say that I do enjoy it when you do that. Um, I would uh, I would refrain from using the words obnoxious and do in the same sentence. <laughs> That's extremely true. Um, Fuck. Now, Terry, you were saying that you were a big fan of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Yes. And um, I, I don't know the specifics of it. All I saw is that apparently someone at uh, at Bioware uh, is that right? Hmm. They want to make a they want to make a BioServe. BioS Bio BioS BioS Source. Bioshock Games Unlimited. They want to make a t- they want to make a tactics uh, a tactical Dragon Age game. Oh, it's okay. Bioware, right? Okay, am I right? I'm yeah, right. It is Bioware. Yeah, yeah, it is Bioware. Bioware. Yeah. Don't play those games on They're... purpose. Yeah. <laughs> really, that's. Do I hate every game that everyone uh, that everyone loves? I don't know. If I, I don't know. Are you Dragon doing that on games? purpose? You trying to be a hipster? Wasn't Cap- Wasn't Captain J playing the Dragon Age games? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She likes them. Oh yeah, that's They're, what I they're yeah. decent games. I'm bitter about one game in particular, that, I, and so I kind of stayed away from the, all the Dragon Ages after that experience. It violated me. I what, don't, are you, huh? what are you doing? Can you show me on this Jonesy where it touched you? <laughs> the issue. Please. Was, okay. It was. It was right. <laughs> Please right, on the, right on the do. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um that's so. Oh. You have a lot of cans of soda. I always pack Mountain Dew. You never know when you're going to need to do. Is there anything else? It's very refreshing. Cools you to the core. That's brisk. Suck it. That is. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, anyway, in Dragon Age, the original Dragon Age, I I, I got excited for the game. I really wanted to play it. And it is, it was, for the most part, it was a very enjoyable game. I enjoyed it. The one problem I made was making my main character a rogue, I think it was. A... Woman, <laughs> you said it. I didn't really ruined it. No, but the woman. There was a woman that actually ended up ended, ended up fucking up my game. Um, well, that, there's ooh. your one right there, pal. Yeah. It's, uh, oh my. Oh my. My f bomb. Yep. Yep. Okay. What are you talking about? He already. He already used it when he was reading the email. I may have. Yeah. Oh. I think, <laughs> I, actually, I think there was a third one in there that you guys didn't hear. Um, that I said it a few minutes ago. Um, I'll have to cut back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the problem was that it was a story element. I'm not going to get real deep into it, but essentially I made a choice that I thought made sense for my character at the end. A a story interaction, a character interaction with my character and my healer. And because I made a decision, the healer disappeared and would disappear from the rest of the game. And this happens like like right before the end of the game. So I lost my healer. Completely. At the end of the game, what do you need a healer for? The last battle. If you if you if you need a healer for the last battle, you've made more than one poor choice in that. Right, being being a rogue, that was a big problem. Where's the rest of your boys? Your I your, struggled through that game so hardcore. Where, where's your paladin? Where's your where's your entrepreneur? Where's your Aunt Dixie? Where's your, <laughs> my Aunt Dixie. I don't know. Classic, classic fantasy characters. Right. Well, apparently I fucked up. Ha! Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know if Mr. Danforth is going to be pleased with that. Next episode is not going to be fun. No. Um, so anyway, fuck it. I don't even care anymore. Um, so what ended up happening, whatever. I made some bad decisions. I guess I, I just hate myself because I'm not good at video games. Okay. Um, but we were talking about the possibility of a tactical Dragon Age game. Which sounds awesome to me because there there was I remember reading about this recently when we brought it up we talked about it. Um, the first Dragon Age was actually closer to a tactical game than the the sequels. It was well okay I never played the sequels but no it was pretty it was pretty clearly a tactical game you could do stuff. <sighs> that belch brought to you by Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew, why not? Because we're not a corporately... I don't even know what we hey, are. Hey, no, whoa, but whoa. We're, I don't just even know. I don't even know. What, do, man. I am. Okay. Shut up. We're not corporately sponsored, but my belches are. Mm. Right. By Mountain Dew, apparently. It's whatever. It makes you better at video games. Makes you better at video games? Makes you better at life. Can, irrever- can, can irreverably alter your genome. 
I will say that. Mm-hmm. But that only makes you more extreme. Um, no, there was stuff that you could do in uh, in the game while the clock was running, so to speak. Yeah, you could make real like in a, real time. Yeah, you could like pause and then figure out some tactical moves, even prepare spells and actions while you're in the pause menu, and then let it rip. Which is kind of like Vats in a way. Oh yeah, from Fallout Four or Fallout Three, but, Fallout a- anything. But you um, know. You saying that reminds me that I've said for years that VATS exists because um, Bethesda uses notoriously small teams to make games, and uh, it's not it's not a great first person shooter. So they need to in- introduce the RPG elements by slowing everything down. And so I think that maybe you can probably say the same thing about Dragon Age. I haven't given Dragon Age its fair share of my time mm-hmm. in order to figure that out because I don't enjoy the play style overall. I, I did like the battle system in Dragon Age, the original Dragon Age. That's one part of the game I really did enjoy. I just My character selection was, was a bad choice. Interesting. I thought it felt a little convoluted. but That's what I liked about it. But as we know, I love convolute, convoluted and, and unnecessarily complex things. How you used to play Magic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I played recently, not too long ago. Because <laughs> I played, I played recently, not too long ago, a short time ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jay Free was got into it for a while, and she needed somebody to play, so I got back into it a little bit. That's right. I forgot that she went through that phase. We need to bring over our cards so we can play. Yeah, yeah. You know, we should just dish dish about our personal lives for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a great idea. I think that a tactical like. The tactical thing would make... I don't know that I would enjoy it. But I would enjoy it more... But I would enjoy it more than the game trying to be both. Pretending to be sure. an action RPG and... And a tactical RPG. Well, and a turn-based, essentially. Like, choose yeah, choose a goddamn time. lane already, Bioware. Right? Am I right, guys? <laughs> what is the deal with Bioware? <laughs> is it tactical? Is it turn-based? What's going on in this Mass Effect? What galaxy are we in? <laughs> the Andromeda, Andromeda galaxy, that's, that's the answer. I don't want him affecting my mass, I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 I was actually listening to Seinfeld. He, really? Yeah. Well, he he actually okay. I'll, th- this is interesting. And if anybody wants, because he he's touted as a very good comedian, he's, he is very talented. Sure. But I will say this: is that while I don't get a lot of belly laughs out of him, he no, he doesn't get a lot of belly laughs out of me. I should say, uh, we never spoken. He doesn't know I exist. Sad. Don't worry about it. It's all right. It's, all right. it's worse because he kind of looks like my dad. Um, <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, he he speaks about so many different things that you just want to listen to him. Yeah, yeah. I think he's like he, it's, it's, it's relatable like a, comedy. He's like a stand-up podcaster. So what he's like. yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. First podcast actually. The uh, first uh, podcast was actually in the Civil War. Fact. Was one of those fireside chats? No, that fireside chat was World War Two. Yeah, it was, it was FDR. So yeah, yes, yeah. Study, study up in your history, pal. Yeah. yeah. Well, interesting other yeah. facts about Jerry Seinfeld. I own his book, and I read part of it. <laughs> also, that is an interesting fact about Jerry yeah. Seinfeld. You are correct. <laughs> no, we actually share the same birthday. Oh, yeah, that's weird. It is weird. You know who I share a birthday with? Mm. No, I know your birthday's not birthday's not in April, so it's not Hitler. Um, Marilyn Monroe. No, Ryu Yoshi from the Street Fighter series. Hey, hey. it's not a real person. I'm gonna take for a ride. But I'm, but I'm, I'm gonna take you for a ride. Woo! But I'm, but I'm, I'm gonna take you for a ride. Woo! But I'm, but I'm. Fuck. Um. This, this. <sighs> God damn it. This whole thing's a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> this one's off the rails. Um. She's a killer. But, That's another annoying song from Fighting Game. Killer Instinct. Orchid's theme song. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, but no, tactically speaking, I, uh, I'm i going to probably give this one a, a pass. I didn't like Dragon Age to begin with. I'm not terribly concerned with the story. Weirdly, 
I like the tabletop RPG. That is a solid game. Hmm. I think you've mentioned that before. Mm-hmm. No, it's really good. Um, it does something that not a lot of like tabletops really, really achieve, and that's having a unique game feel. You know, normally it's it's that that pa- the pacing and everything is decided by how the DM runs it. There are core mechanics to this game that cause it to feel uh, uh, to feel different from other games, and it's very fast paced and it's very fun. Interesting. Um, we'll have to give it a try sometime. Speaking of fast paced and fun, and games wow. that you do not play, games that you do not play on a screen. I've heard that there's this live dungeon thing that we can talk about. Tell us more. So there's this live dungeon thing. <laughs> you guys approach segways <laughs> in the exact same way. <laughs> I love Ham fisted. Yeah. <laughs> True dungeon. What's that? <laughs> That's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> Reefer? You mean the cigarette that peps you up? <laughs> Zing. I don't know what's going on anymore. But anyway, so True Dungeon Do you ever was. Know what's, no, what's no, don't. Let's that that not go down that rabbit hole. Um, I have no idea what's going on. True Dungeon is the real name of the, the thing we were talking about. Correct, Mundo. And it's a very cool live, literally live action, almost pretty much. It's not quite LARPing. Well, none of it's animated. Right. But it's not quite literally LARPing because you're not literally getting into character, but you are playing, basically playing characters like a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. Hold on. There are NPCs that do, like, makeup and stuff. Right. The NPCs, but the players don't necessarily get into character. Let's let's like the whole thing. True Dungeon was, uh, is this thing that's been going on for years now. Um, it was, uh, it was put together and organized by a guy named uh, Jeff Martin, and essentially what it is is... Lately, there have been these things called escape rooms that are very popular where you go to a real location and you have to work out some stuff um, as, a, as a team in order to win a sort of game. Not a board game. It's a real-life game. True Dungeon is like ten rooms, right. and you're actually going through this subterranean place, fighting monsters, gathering clues solving puzzles, and interacting with monsters. Right. Sometimes they're actors, sometimes they're animatronic. Not actually underground, though. You made it sound like it's actually underground. It's under some ground. It's under a roof. It's under Australia. It's under China. Oh, God damn it! Ha! Whatever. Yeah. Um, it's also upside down. Yes. Also, I have eczema. <laughs> um, no, so, um, I would say it's LARPing. I would say it's LARPing okay. because uh, there was the there was the uh, the drow chick. The drow chick was in one of the uh, videos. By the way, we're going to post all the links that you will need to learn everything you need to know about True Dungeon below. Um, you know about Link's Bellows, right? Link's Bellows. Yeah, right. Link, Link's Bellows is the unofficial uh, third host. Well, you're the yeah I, I'm, yeah no you're the yeah, official. He's been third replaced. Host. Yeah, apparently official. Yeah, so you're Link's if, Bellows now. If if our great leader, Mr. Danforth Edge of Blade, says it's th- a thing, then it's official. He didn't say anything about it. You know what color you wrote Link about wears, it. right? Green. Mountain like, green. Like the do. Wearing green. Oh, like you do. You know what? I'm on board now. I like this. Yeah, it's great. Um, I hate it. I hate everything about it. The interesting thing about uh, True Dungeon is that it's been going on for a long time. It's a fabulously good idea, but you never hear about it because they hit like three cons a year. The main the way the way I understand it is that it's at Gen Con, which is in Indiana, um, which is something I've always wanted to go to. Hopefully, we can do that. Indiana, you want to go to Indiana? I want to go to Indi- I've been to Indiana. I just haven't been to Gen Con. Warlocks do Indiana. Bam. Bam. So. And actually, I don't want to. I don't want to sound too cheesy about this, but that's one of our goals that we have on our Patreon page. We'll have a link to that under the uh, video or look audio. below. So check that out. That's one of the goals we want to do is actually cover more cons. Anyway, links below. Links below. Links below. So what were we talking about before we got off track? True Dungeon. True Dungeon. Yeah, no, True Dungeon. But you're saying it's Gen Con specific. Indiana. It's in Indiana. So <laughs> so the Gen Con. That's where that's where it happens. It takes is a giant like one of the big halls or whatever wherever the convention is 
and they take over the whole room and they and they do it there. They have other cons that they go to, but they don't set up the whole thing. Is what I understood. They have a presence there, but they don't actually set up the whole thing. Now, they just set up the craft service table, and they sell the the, the coins, me- the mechanic dragons, um, and you can smell an elf. Yeah, which yeah. is which is always fun and delightful. Um, but the they actually sell these coins, which is interesting. You can collect them and use them in the game from year to year. You can actually carry them over, which is really interesting. That give you bonuses, like you have a plus it's your one gear. dagger. Yeah, it's yeah. Your gear. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a really cool way if. For no other reason, like I didn't say if they, whether this is a non-profit thing or not, but it, I would I would suspect that, that helps keep this thing running um, as far as because there's not a whole lot of money involved. It seems I don't know if you have to they probably charge to go through it. I'm sure you have. I'm yeah. sure you charge. And plus the sure. coins and the coins, yeah. So I'm sure that helps. You know, supplement. You know, get get some because the stuff was high quality. Like they have animatronics and shit. Yeah. Also, I don't know exactly what their overhead is like because he did mention in the video that he's got 150 volunteers. 250. 250. Sorry, 250 volunteers. Right. So people are more than willing, like gaming nerds, they just want this so badly. Yes. I would be surprised if he has to pay anything. Right. If he was just to like to go to like a magic card shop and be like, hey, I want to make D&D for real. Would you guys like to give me $5? And then he just leaves. Yeah, and they yeah all he might be able to find people <laughs> yeah. to help him construct these items. So. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, well, that one, one, one thing, very humbly, he said that he's surrounded by people who are smarter than him, so he's probably not the animatronics expert. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he's, pro- he's, he's probably not the decorator, designer, and things like that. It's probably, uh, he, he, he probably, his wheelhouse is probably in game mechanics and stuff like that. Um, one thing that I was curious about is uh, I, I actually had um, a similar idea for a game that that used coins. Uh-huh. Um, how, how do you how do you keep from getting um, coins um, ma- uh, manufactured uh, by individuals? Well, what counterfeit. He was talking about how uh, they produce new coins every year. Well, sure, so, but some of them carry over. You can yeah, carry cer- over. certain permanent items, sure. But I'm sure they're uh, they're done in a special way. I hope that they put chips in them. That would solve it right there. I doubt it had chips in it ten Probably years not. ago. Probably, yeah, ten years ago, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, ten years ago, that was the um, that was actually the Spanish American War. Yeah, so that's a thing. No one was alive back then. No one. No. Who was the war against? Who was fighting the war? Spain. Listen, Johnny. You're right. Listen to my you words. Said, you said they're always dead. like this constantly. <laughs> um, so I guess why we wanted to bring it up was. Maybe you guys would learn about it and thusly uh, spread uh, spread the word that the Warpod has a uh, open invitation to True Dungeon. Go repeat that. That was right in the mic. Okay. Uh, you can't hear anything the, you're saying. Uh, the, <laughs> the, so uh, the Warlock really wants True Dungeon to come to Houston. Yes, that would we, be fantastic. We, we have nothing to offer you, in, not at all, in order to entice you, except for um, our abs. I'm your Huckleberry. Such as they are, um, yeah. <laughs> Sight unseen. I, <laughs> um, so Johnny, you've experienced larping. I okay. have. Terry, Terry, have you done larping? No, you've never, you've never done larping. Never done larping. I don't want to look like the really stupid nerd here. <laughs> you, Too late. <laughs> you, you both were in theater though. Well, that's different. It's not different. It's an established art form. Yeah. With thousands of years of tradition. Whereas LARPing is a bunch of fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> How many fucks does he get, huh? Well, I get one. Okay. And that's your fourth? The fifth. Seventh. Oh, yeah. Um, the, you know, this explains a lot. Yeah. I feel like I should be drinking actual beer. Why am I, why am I drinking Mountain Dew? Because it's refreshing and delightful. Because it makes all the difference. Anyway, what was your question about LARPing? You, you've, you've experienced LARPing. Yeah. Um, but you were hesitant to say that this was it. Right. Um, can you expound upon that? Yeah. Um, Do you think that there's something that a LARPer will feel out of place in doing this? No. I think LARPers would feel right at home. And I think that they may even dress up. I, don't, I think that you can go trying to play a character, like acting like a character. Um, I think that you can go with or without doing that. Um, in this particular, at least that's what it looked like. Like these people, genu- uh, genuinely are just going in there and they're solving puzzles. They're 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 doing their shuffleboard thing for combat, um, and it's really skill based, which is I thought was really interesting. And some of these puzzles look pretty complex. I mean, we're not talking like um, 
you know, here's a Rubik's Cube, have fun kind of thing. Like, yeah. They had this, uh, it was like a circular display using some kind of magnets, right? And they had all these different shapes, and they had to put them in the right yeah. alignment to get this ball in the middle to, or the ball in the inner ring area yeah. to get to the middle. Yeah. And it was fascinating to watch, because they're having to dance around and put these blocks in. And, and they mentioned and this was designed to be very luminescent, yeah. so it really does set the tone yeah. Yeah. With, uh, uh, while still being a game. The details are great for this kind of thing. They're a lot, a lot better than you might think they are. Um, Don't get too excited when I say the word animatronics. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was a metal... That was a that was a metal and rubber dragon rising out of a box and moving his head thusly. Right. But you know when you're in his when you're in a subterranean environment, you're surrounded by by uh, by witch ladies who are making making fun of the pleats in your jeans. You're going to be intimidated. It's true. That's just physics. Plus, it's not cardboard, right? Yeah. That's what we should do. We should make our own. We, we should do it. We yeah, should make, yeah. We, make, we should make our own little live dungeon we'll thing. Call, of we'll call it the the we'll jank call, dungeon. Yeah, look up poo dungeon. Poo dungeon. <laughs> I, I, well, you might attract a different crowd for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the uh, the thing about that is that the cardboard is very absorbent. Oh, so, so we'll be oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. 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 So cardboard either way. Yeah. Th- those smells won't linger at all. Warlock's entertainment system. Come poo in a cardboard box with us. <laughs> I think that's the macro message that we should be sending out. Yeah. Yeah. That should be the new slogan. Uh, <laughs> and I think that. Um, that's probably the best way that we could have ended our uh, our, our segment on True Dungeon. Yeah, let's, um, let's move on to uh, <laughs> top three. Top three! top three! Ladies and gentlemen, today, so that we can better learn about our new friend Jonesy, we have decided that our top three will be the top three unreleased yet most anticipated Games video games. 2K16. Two, is that how you say that? Two, yeah, that's what they say these days. Yeah. That would be 200016. Yeah, well, the uh, the zeros are implied. It is 2016. That's saying the same thing. Two you said 2K16. That's 200016. Yeah. yeah. Making it a six digit number. Terry. Well uh, over 20,000. Zach, why don't you go first? Um, Okay, top three most anticipated, unreleased games I'm looking forward to that are in a video format. Brought to you by Mountain Dew. Brought to me by Mountain Dew. Is it? I don't think this is a real thing. Uh, I don't think your opinion matters here. No. Um, Please continue, Zach. So, in the order... That they're coming out in. Oh. This is not about value. It's about Ooh. time. I think it's the first time I've ever done this. I like it. Um, You're so creative. Number three, coming out this April, Star Fox Zero. Coming at you, America. The first Star Fox for the Wii U. Isn't this game going to suck? Dude. Bro. Who said that? Star Fox. I heard, I heard it was going to suck. Hey. Um, you should not use the words suck and Star Fox in the same sentence. Nor should you use you're the dictating... words sucks and Mountain Dudes. Actually, yeah, you're okay. dictating a lot of my grammar Hold on. in speech. In fan fiction, you can say sucks and Star Fox. Okay, well, yeah, the, there's context. Uh... <laughs> and he, you is like a, that one, he is a mammal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't have lips, so he. Never mm. mind. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I lost my mind. Go ahead. Okay, so um, yeah, Star Fox Zero is going to be great. Who? What? What? What made you think that it's not going to be? I heard. I've heard some people that have gotten their hands on some stuff and demos and stuff that it was not. I thought there were demos. Maybe it's just the footage. It's unusual for a Star Fox game. Yeah, it's just like a tank and shit, right? There was a tank in. Uh, I wouldn't Assault. know. There I was a tank in sixty four. I don't play this bullshit. Uh, I think there was a tank in Adventures. But there was like, there and was I like... think you're talking about the Landmaster. Yeah, I remember he doesn't have good taste in games. That's true. Um, no, there's a tank. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the whole the whole thing is that you get to you can do every level as a different um, vehicular. You you get to choose your vehicle. So you know if 
you're if you're zooming through and there was like a there was like some cave off to the side mm-hmm. that you noticed while you were going through in your R wing. You're like, I'll go back to this level in my tank. Or in my helicopter. <gasps> what? And, and guess what? The game is designed for you to want to do that because secret coin. Of course. Ten out of ten. I don't know. What, I don't know what else to say. I can't. I. If well, that's, let's. Okay. Let's. Let's. We'll, we'll re-examine. Sounds pretty fantastic to me. I love that R wing. Yeah. We'll, we'll, emergency. We'll... Emergency. <laughs> All R wing fires. Prepare for launch. <laughs> oh, that silly. What's your number two? <laughs> Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Got him. Number two, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Fuck that. Ah, I like it. NBA yeah. game for you. Is it? Yes. yes. I didn't know that. Um, no, uh, I really liked Mirror's Ed- Ed- Edge 1. That was, weirdly, I was, in, I was an adult when this game came out. and It's been a long time. Yeah, um, it, but it was one of those games that I only played over at a friend's house. You know? Oh, I played um, through the whole thing. And you didn't like it? No, actually, I did. <laughs> I just I don't have high expectations for the second one. Why? It's just gonna be Mirror's Edge. I know, but they're doing weird things with it, um, uh, and and I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it. It gets into weird politics. I don't want to get into it. No, now you've got me into yeah, it. Yeah, we've this talked is about this before. Thing. And Ida Sarkeesian was a uh, a a they, they brought her in as like a consultant, just so they could make the game feminist enough or something like that. Isn't the lead character a female? Yes. Correct. Look, I don't know, like I said, I don't know exactly what her involvement was, but I have weird feelings about the game. What? I don't care. I, I know like, you don't. I do. I like you the, ask me how I feel. I, I like the gameplay. My feelings matter. Not really. You know what you can drown your feelings in? Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Hey, Mountain Dew. There's no way. He's got another. There's Take still it. plenty Turn of Mountain Dew. Uh, <laughs> it never ends. I don't know how we're going to drink all these. We literally have half a dozen, if not more, Mountain Dews on the table for our audio listeners. Johnny would count, but he can only count to five. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Um, no, the. I mean, it's just going to be... I, I didn't know anything about the... The security discrimination stuff. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. I could not care less. But it's a video game, you yeah. know? It, I, a look, parkour video I'm, game. I, I'm going to... I reserve... My final judgment until I play the game. I just I'm worried about the game because it is a good. It was. A, I hope it's a good continuing franchise. It took a long time to make this sequel. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope I hope that it, it is good because I did enjoy the first one. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm nervous about it. It just it just sounds to me like if they were going to bring if if they're going to bring a personality like hers to be a consultant in order to make the game more uh, more uh, more feminist driven then it would affect the story mm-hmm. and i just played and thoroughly enjoyed a uh, a game that has a really bad story that was cookie scary. mama 2 cookie mama 2 no uh Metal Gear Solid 5 uh yeah you know revengeance with a pain no oh the the fan the, the, the phantom the, hourglass the fan- <laughs> Um, it's a real thing. No, so you know, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fine with it, regardless of what the little digital puppets are talking about. Cool, because yeah, hopefully the gameplay is still as solid as the first one. The first one was, and they did you try to do that fucking uh, 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 there, the challenge? Words. There's, there's, yeah, there's words. words. Achievement. There's achievement where if you beat the game without firing a single shot. Yep. You got this really nice achievement, and the, I, it was like I tried so hard to get it, and there's one level where it's nearly impossible. You you got a pretty easy, didn't you? Is that the Mountain Dew? A... This belt brought to you by Costco. Costco, it's gonna hurt. I bet you can get a lot of Mountain Dew at Costco. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I hate achievements. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to answer your question, I don't care. Okay, I don't hate them. I care so little about them that I I often confuse what the two achievement systems are called between Xbox. Trophies, trophies, and trophies, trophies. And yeah. Yeah, if you were... Gun, gun... Okay. Gun to my head. I couldn't tell you with absolute certainty which one's which. We should just come up with a name for them. Achievements. They're all achievements. Because well, I don't care. I mean, a trophy is an achievement. I mean, is it? I mean, 
Can we call them bro achievements? Because it's trophy on one. We call it bro achievements. Yeah. But it's trophy on one and it's bitcoins on the other? Trophies. It's trophies on one, tro- so, yeah, the tri- so they're all trophies. On the other. No, trophies and achievements. Trophies and Those achievements. are two different things. P- PlayStation is trophies, Xbox is achievements. Okay. Yeah. They're both meaningless. Yes. Um, <laughs> they're arbitrary things to make you compete with your friends. I never know who has how many and where and why. X- never, X- ever. Xbox makes it pretty clear. You go to your friends list, it'll tell you who has a higher gamer score. I know exactly where to find my friends list on my PlayStation. You know what I don't do? Look at it. That. Yes. Because <laughs> you hate your friends. <laughs> don't. It's just um, me and my friends IRL... Um, we uh, we don't we don't play the same games very often. Right. Um, Somebody and, sucks. Uh, the the friends the friends that I do meet I meet in games that I play competitively for a very short amount of time because network. Um, Have you gotten to your number one yet? No, no. This, this is a really long list. We don't have all night. Number one, TMT Mutants in Manhattan. That's a game, or will be a game coming out this summer. Official release date, TBA. In a half shell. Turtle power. That was clever. I like that. So, this they'll see more of from us because we will we will do uh, Let's we're Play. We're going to play the crap out of, of this game. game. Especially if we can do three, four player co-op. Coming soon to you. Which, still, jury's out on that, so I don't know. Uh, we should definitely play the uh, the 2007 uh, simply named TMNT. Yeah. And we should also play Out of the Shadows. I agree. Because my um, my understanding is that both of those games don't have uh, co-op of any kind. Oh, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I, know that, I know that 2007 doesn't. Okay. I think. Well, that know. was a nice list. Um, thank you for sharing. Would I'm you like to, to give your list? Yeah, I'll give mine. So, number three on mine is Pokemon Go. Oh yes! Um, Not which, bad. Which Not I'm bad. really looking forward to because I want to catch Pokemon's in like downtown, traffic. downtown. Yes, in traffic in downtown Houston or wherever I'm at. You know, places, things, Walmart. I just thought of like kind of a hack to the game, or at least like something that can be done to exploit it, mm-hmm. because the game has a lot to do with going to a specific location. Yeah. To get the Pokemon, yeah, like that's an important part of it. In fact, that's the whole. There's no com- no, there is combat, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you do have to stop. Yeah, and yeah. Okay, well, I was thinking you could just run around and collect all the Pokemon possible. Oh yeah, no, no, that's not quite how it works. Um, but what really interesting is that one of the cooler parts is that like legendary Pokemon can spring up, and multiple trainers in the area can have to go there and fight it together. That's awesome. Yes, yeah. that's gonna. That's probably going to be the thing that um, gets me to leave the house. <laughs> yes, the first thing. Number two. Mass Effect Andromeda. What? Mass Effect Andromeda. Is that is it just Mass Effect 4? Yes. Well, kind of. It's Mass Effect. 4. What's the difference? Is Shepard going to be in it? Probably. Is Lady Shepard going to be in know. it? No, it's it's a new it's a new installment in the series. Lady Shepard is canon Lady Shepard. Lady Shepard. Yeah, that's true. Yep. That is fact. That was released by BioWare. Yep, Lady Shepard is canon Shepard. Wait, as opposed to male both of them being canon? Correct. Yeah, how could they both be canon? Alternate universe? Okay, but they're, they're saying that that didn't happen, and it's Lady Shepard. Oh, they said that? Officially? Yeah. 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 Are, they, are they doing that to pander? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you new? <laughs> of course they are. I still think it's cool, because yeah, yeah. I always have, and pretty much always will, prefer female video game characters. Sure. It's a thing. I like boobs, too. Number one is Doom. It's about fashion. I like fashion, and I hate men's fashion. However, I'm not a transvestite. Right. I right. don't. Ha- I don't have interest in being them. But you know, I like to see. I, it's why I like Final Fantasy X too. Right. You get to, to play dress up. Mm-hmm. What else do you get to do that? Real life. I tried cutting it off by going to my next one, but that didn't work. I'll bet. Yeah. So Doom. Doom is my number one. My number <laughs> un. <laughs> what? That game. It cracks me up. Doom. Yeah. It looks fantastic to me. Did Did you say Doom? I didn't say do. Or do. Ah! If, uh, if you said doom, then by you said default, do. yes. you said do. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> so, this game, I'm not going to say the title anymore. It looks fantastic. Uh, it's faster paced than the original. 
which I was a big fan of. I had the red cartridge on uh, my Super Nintendo, uh, which is awesome. And it's it's a great game. I said it before. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Yeah, here's the weird thing about Zoom. It kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> like, you might want to start the clock, by the way. Um, I, like, this game, this game looks like kind of a novelty to me. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, we're gonna, th- we're gonna throw in, like, all the manliest things we uh-huh. possibly like can. Like, it's almost pandering to the fans. Oh, definitely. Do, and do you think it's gonna be better or worse than Duke Nukem Forever? Probably worse. Yeah? Probably by a pretty wide margin. Yeah, I Um, because I enjoyed Duke, Duke Nukem, and I think that everybody did. Um, Duke Nukem Forever, that is. There are several iterations. Uh, there, there, right, there. we have to be specific on this one. You know, I think that the Doom first... will be worse than Duke Nukem Forever. It, 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 compared to Duke Nukem Forever, it will be pretty much unplayable. Um, and I think that with a game with a game like that, where where you just you're trying to you're trying to throw the man at him, you know, mm-hmm. it's you need. After a while, the joke gets old. Yeah, like, after about ten minutes. It, yeah. it, it, it's kind of yeah. well. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Kickass Commandos mm-hmm. or Bro Force. They work on a smaller scale. They're right. trying to make a big budget, of course, triple A game. You're going to be sinking tens, twenty, thirty hours into, and this is gonna it's gonna get stale. Yeah, it's gonna it's get stale. It's a time waster. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It may, it may as well be a mobile game. It may as well, maybe it might, well, mobile might, games are a little hot right now. Mo- mo- mobile games are hot right now. Yeah, you did, so hot right now. Uh, I have heard that many times. Yeah. I don't know from where. But Doom, no, it's it's, it's going to flop. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And I, um, I don't I don't blame it. I mean, just right off the bat. Very little appealing, actually. Johnny? Yeah. You're number one? That was my number one. So I guess he's done. All right. So we move on. My number three. So I'll start off with number three. This is a game I'm pretty uh, pretty stoked about. Minions Paradise. Now I know what you're thinking. Minions Paradise. What is this guy raving about? What is that beeping? That is okay. my heart increased by the excitement and exhilaration of Minions we'll edit that Paradise. We'll edit that no, the reaction was cool. No, you love it. And. Uh, so it's a mobile game coming out April sixteenth. Uh, wait, 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 Terry, did you just say Minions? Minions Paradise. Paradise. Yeah. So basically, what happens in the story, right? You're playing this minion dude, and uh, he accidentally causes a ship to wreck because they're all on vacation on a cruise, and it's all his fault. So now he has to fix that by creating this Paradise Island, and you get to level up, and you can make this really cool exotic resort. Yeah. It's going to be free to play. Very minor uh, uh, microtransactions. No. Yeah, just tr- trust me. I know. You s- just watch the gameplay. Watch the footage. None of this sounds Check right. Check out the E3. Just give it a try. None of this Number sounds Number two. Three. E3. 2015 did, E3. Did they have a crappy mobile games episode? Bro. Yeah. Yeah. It was part of the main EA. It was part of the main EA event. EA gets, gets actually got a lot of criticism because they put... A little like, snippets of all of hey, their hold games. On, hold on, we we don't talk bad about it. Either. So number two, who's we? I don't understand what's going on. Number two, my number two was also Mirror's Edge Cataclysm, which cat, Cataclysm, Cataclysm, right which will be coming out no, May twenty first. Mirror's Edge to Cataclysm, because it's gonna wreck your butt. It's gonna wreck your butt. Coming out to Xbox One and PlayStation and PC, if I remember correctly. Everything comes out for PC. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just keep your eye out. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Actually, talking about, as I was about to say, consoles are worthless, but I did want to mention that there's an, there's yet another uh, Xbox-ism that I learned. I was uh, I was teaching Captain Jay's uh, mom to use the Xbox One so that she could watch an uh, Amazon video on it. Yeah. And um, it took us ten minutes to download the application. Um Whereupon I had to re uh, I, I had to look online that it was time to reboot the system, and um, what, even after we had reboot the system, we got everything working. She uh, she had to log in to Amazon and then log in again, and then she turned off the system, and then she turned it back on, and she had to redo the entire process except wow. for the download. And she was just like, "This is stupid." What was her conclusion? That she should get a smart TV. So? So, Xbox One. 
just get a smart TV. Can we get that caption down at the bottom? Okay, okay. <laughs> look, look, look. If we're gonna if we're gonna start throwing hey, stones again about the Xbox I, uh, versus PlayStation, hold on. No, it's no, not no, versus no. PlayStation. It's I think, versus. I think we need to get you a number to the Mayo Clinic because you just got burned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, it's not. It's not versus PlayStation. It's versus. It is common sense. No, it is. It is. <laughs> since, since the last time we've talked about it, and we really went to you know near blows over this Microsoft PlayStation debate. There has been at Hello, least this three. This is a Star Fox fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> There's been at least three or four um, article headlines I've seen that said that the PlayStation net- Network was down again. And as Johnny will tell you, everything on the internet is true. I don't know what to tell you about your internet rumor mill. I know that every time I turn on my Xbox, it pisses me off. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Because the time, the time I, when I turned when I turned it on the first time ever, you know, was waiting there for me. Enough Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have no defense for that. Okay. I have no defense for that. Unity was Done. shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know why I'm drinking and, this shit. Still. <laughs> um. Because you're doing the do, buddy. <laughs> I think you need another do. <laughs> How many do's do we have? It sounded like he was empty. So, please, take this one on me. And you too, America. Have a Mountain Dew on Jonesy. Number two. That was, no, Mirror's Edge was my number That's two. That's right. Uh, my number one is, uh, they haven't quite released details on it yet, but it'll be the uh, EA Madden 2016 coming out near the end of the year, as they tend to do. Uh, I'm, that's, I'm pretty stoked about that. You know, maybe I could... Uh, a sports game? Yeah, it's Madden, bro. Madden. It's Madden, bro. Madden. Bro. Okay, you know what's weird? Um, because we're sort of... I mean, we've gone b- back and forth on this where, you know, I think that bro gaming isn't, a, isn't an ugly word. Um, but uh, I played, I played a, a genre that I had no interest in for years. And I, I, was, I was really having a good time. I played drive, drive Club. Dry Club? Drive Club. Drive Club. Oh, yeah. car g- racing games. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are fun. Yeah, dry dry club is a, a it's tan- way different. It's a tanning bed simulator. <laughs> Why are you so wet going into the tanning booth? <laughs> oh, hold on, Terry. Terry, is there a point to the Madden updates anymore? Yeah, you, like you how new are, rosters? You know, I mean, let's say so. Your let's say your digital season, puppets have different names. Well, the season's over. You know, you want you want to play with your new team. Yeah, twenty fifteen. There was no other year so far. There's there it will there will be no other year we can play Johnny Manziel. He he's gone from football. I'm sure. Plus, wait, why? Oh, he beat up his girlfriend, and he's a drug addict. Is that against the is is that against the rules in football? When they get caught, he he probably be suspended. <laughs> there, so nobody did, wanted to touch him. Did he, he get a publicity. did he get a flag? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't know which Mountain Dew's mine. I'm just gonna open it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty stoked about Madden coming out. Usually, I think around October, October time frame. So uh, be on the lookout, America. Man, sixteen. Does it come out before the season starts? I would imagine I it so. does. I don't think it does. Yeah. I think it's right around the. Uh, I haven't played one in time. a long time, actually. There's a uh, there's there's actually a famous conference, and I can't remember which one it is, but they always have the quarterbacks from both teams uh, sit down and play that game in Madden. Mm-hmm. And it almost always decide like what whatever happened in Madden in Madden almost in always Madden. happens in the uh, well. There's in actually the real world. there's actually a lot of different um, gaming uh, media like I think IGN does it too, where they actually just put let, let the computers play and they split, do a simulator to see who wins games. Well, this one's famous because they get the actual the actual, quarterbacks to play. Yeah, the NFL superstars, Stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah, yeah Bill Goldberg, yeah, yeah, Andre the Giant, yeah, Macho Man, Whoop- Randy Savage, Whoopi Goldberg. You want to play some Madden, brother? I got three minutes of you with you. Three minutes of overtime. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> we did this last. I episode, think we need to we? manage to fit a, a, a Macho Man Randy Savage uh, quote into every every podcast. Oh yeah, I think that's important. Oh yeah, something to the space. Rest in peace, Randy. Oh yeah. Here's a do for you. I'm happy to say this episode's almost over. Real, I just started having fun. Yeah, it's been great. 
Um, you know, I think this is part of the reason why uh, Mr. Danforth sent me. We need a little bit more diversity. Oh, he did send you. A little bit more excitement. Yeah, we need, another, we need some more diversity, another white guy. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing green. Yeah. Lots well, of Mountain Dew shit all over And him. I'm part Native American. There. One sixteen. Oh, who isn't? <laughs> I, I'm not. That's impossible. I don't believe you. <laughs> I believe you're wrong. All right. <clears throat> um, which uh, which one of your cultures have you appropriated? Like me, when, when when people ask me, I tell them I'm Mexican and Scottish, despite all the stuff. That I have. <laughs> all the crap. Yeah. <laughs> despite all the other crap. <laughs> I tell them I'm French. Shut up, Holland. <laughs> Your tiny. genes don't matter. <laughs> well, I'm glad everyone's having fun because Terry is definitely not coming back on this podcast, or Jonesy, I should say. The email explicitly said that he comes on. No, I'm tired of I'm tired of this this Mr. Danforth stuff. It's hey, not gonna, America, we're, we're not. This is this this is our podcast. Hey, like, hey, do us a favor, America. Send out a tweet just sometime in the next week saying, "Hey, do we want Jonesy to stay?" Well, sure you go. I appreciate. We'll play it, we'll play it democratically. I appreciate what you're doing, but trust me, America doesn't care. They that, ne- that's extremely true. Yeah, they, they never respond to anything. Oh. We'll see. Yes. All right. We'll see. And I think that's about it, America. Uh, yeah, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Good riddance. Goodbye, everybody. This one's for you. Are these going to affect my genitals? Hey, everybody, this is Johnny Dem. We were supposed to talk about Mary Poppins and the new movie that's going to happen. Uh, that didn't happen, so here's a thing we did. Hope you like it. With a bit of paper and string, you can make your own set of wings. With your feet on the ground, you can take flight. With your fist holding tight, to the string of your kite. Oh, let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's go fly a kite and send it soaring up through the atmosphere, up where the air is clear. Oh, let's go. So I have eczema. <laughs> <laughs>